Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Trails in the Sky. We're going to head back to Estelle and Joshua's room so that the banquet can begin. Intelligence Division's office, authorized personnel only. Aight. Good to know. That's the place I'm gonna raid. Castle gate is currently sealed to help ensure security. Okay. I'm lost already. This is fine. What? Did I get teleported back into the castle from the terrace? Or did I make my way back over here? I can't remember. Got him, dumb. I'm pretty sure I got, te I got teleported. Hey guys, talk about being late. The party's about to start, you know? Sorry, we got so caught up in sightseeing that we lost track of time. Plus, we also talked to all, the, all of the mayors. Huh, well, aren't we well connected? We're close friends with the mayor of Roland. Plus, we've met the other mayors in the course of our travels. Ah, I see. I guess your work as bracers has caused you to meet quite a few big shots. You two sure get around for junior bracers. <laughs> you might say that. Have you done any bracer assignments since we came to Grenzel? I guess it's not all that different in other countries, right? Right. For a full-fledged bracer, nationality isn't an issue when it comes to your work. The prelim fights and legal procedures at the embassy kept me too busy to get any actual work done, though. But hey, there are four other bracers on duty too, which isn't so bad. Normally, that would be enough to handle most cases, I imagine. But with all of them concentrated in Grenzel, that must make it tough to handle any cases in other regions. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I feel like a goose just walked over my grave. I wonder what's going on with, with Shara back in Roland. Now, that name rings a bell. You wouldn't happen to be talking about Sherazard, would you? You know her? She's our mentor, and she's been a close friend for ages. Oh, okay. Makes sense. I met her a long time ago when a case brought her to Calvard. She was fortunate to have a good master working for, with her from such a young age. Her master? Yeah, probably dad. Please, pardon me. The table for the dinner party has been set. May I show you the way? Sure, I was getting bored with, with waiting anyhow. Alright, wanna go in and eat fancy? Sure, that fight lef left me starving. Let's go dig in. C come on, you two. It would be nice if you two didn't completely forget your table banners for once. Um, this is a dinner party, right? What's with all the empty plates, then? Plenty of knives and forks, though. That's because it's a formal dinner. Everything comes out in a specific order, starting with, uh... <laughs> it's been a while since I spoke French. Or... Or... <laughs> I, I... It's been so long I can't articulate my mouth the way it's supposed to be said. <laughs> or d'oeuvre. <laughs> I'm sorry, I butchered that. Then you use the knives and forks from the outside in. If I can't speak English all that well, I can't speak French. And that's all part of having good table manners. And here comes the anxiety attack. May it's really not so bad. It does mean that you have to get some of the finest food available. Manners and etiquette are secondary. Indeed, indeed. I'm told that you're acquainted with everyone who'll be attending. No need to get stressed out. Yeah, I guess that's true. Please, don't encourage her. On that note, is the gentleman accompanying you going to be okay with a knife and fork? I'm told that folks from the East usually eat with chopsticks. You've done your research. However, I'm a firm believer in the when in liberal do as the liberalians do policy. I'm not especially skilled with them, but I will use a knife and fork. My, how elegantly handled. I'm impressed. You're as much a gentleman as you are a martial arts champion. You flatter me. Boy, he really is a complete sucker for a pretty face. I think he's more being polite than a lech, though. Anyway, His Excellency is really late. I wonder what he's up to. Hmm, indeed. So if the seat at the head of the table is for the Duke, then who might that other one be for? Indeed. Perhaps it is intended for Princess Claudia. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. My humblest apologies for the long delay. Presenting His Excellency, the Duke. Well then, I must apologize for making you wait so. 
I'm afraid that I was in a meeting from which I simply could not break away. This gentleman is Colonel Richard, Commanding Officer of the Royal Intelligence Division. I have invite him, invited him here to thank him for his tireless efforts in helping to deal with the terrorist situation. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I was quite gratified to be invited to this occasion by our Honorable Duke. I ask that you pardon my uncouth soldier's uniform and allow me to sit with you. You've got to be kidding. We're having dinner with him? I suspected this might happen, but it's still unnerving. Ha ha! Excellent, excellent! What say you, Mayor Maybell? What do you think of Gransel Castle's master chef? And is, is his cooking not on par with that found in Bose's Anteros restaurant? Yes, it's quite remarkable. The wine selection also perfectly complements the meal. I almost want to try hiring him away. You are not the first to say such things. And what of you, Zane, wasn't it? Is the food to your liking? Oh, it's excellent. I don't have the words to describe the sense of refinement and depth. I certainly believe I could develop a, ta a real taste for Liberalian cuisine, though. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. And you, young bracers? I imagine you've never experienced such fine food in your life before. It's extremely delicious. Far more worthy of being associated with the royal family than the person who invited us. Indeed, this is a genuine treat. Hmm? <laughs> oh, Estelle. Estelle, Estelle, Estelle. It's certainly delicious food. And we couldn't miss a chance to attend so prestigious an event as this. Thank you very much for your gracious invitation. Very kind of you to say so. I do finally remember what my butler has been telling me about. We met before, during the Rouen incident. Perhaps our fates are linked in some bizarre fashion. I yes, sir. Maybe so. So he'd forgotten all about us until his butler reminded him. Come, let us put social classes and ranks aside for the evening. Food is abundant and the wine flows freely, so enjoy to your heart's content. Your Excellency, if we could, I'd like to do as we discussed first. Ah, yes, that's a fine idea. Actually, I have something important to say to you fine folk who represent the kingdom. I use this celebration as the place to make an important announcement. An announcement? And what might that be? Hmm. I believe I will al allow Colonel Richard to explain in detail. Thank you. As you are no doubt already aware, Her Majesty has been in poor health of late. However, she has been recovering and may grace us with a public appearance soon. Ah, that's excellent news! Could we possibly go and check in on her? Unfortunately, she does not consider that to be a wise decision at the moment. Within a few days, it seems likely that the terrorists plaguing the kingdom will be swept away. In light of that, the Queen's birthday celebrations will be held, as originally planned. Hmm. Well, the citizens will surely be happy to hear this news, as they have been looking forward to it. But surely that is not all you wish to tell us. Right. If that were all, you could have just sent along a message. Indeed, you are correct. Her Majesty is continuing to recover, as was previously stated. However, given the gravity of her condition, she has also isu issued a proclamation. Due to her tenuous health, she has stated that she wishes to abdicate the throne and turn over royal authority, authority to her nephew, Duke Dunan. What? Is this true? Joshua, this is... Yeah, the conspiracy finally makes its appearance. I was surprised when Her Majesty first broached the subject as well but her illness has left her quite frail. But it is only natural. She has ruled the kingdom for 40 years, leading it through times of strife and war. All without a husband, I might I add. Given that, I wish to relieve her of the stress of her duties following the festival's six, 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 ah, ah, successful conclusion. As the heir to the throne, the decisions are mine to make. How terrible. Is Her Majesty's condition through truly that severe? I'm ashamed I've never noticed any signs in any of my annual visits. Isn't... isn't this far too serious a matter to discuss at what is supposedly a casual dinner? Pardon my rudeness, but this all seems to stretch crudility. Cru... Credulity. Cred... Never seen that word before in my life. Expanding my vocabulary. Hmm. Mayor Maybell, are you saying that you cannot take His Excellency at his word? No, nothing of the sort. I simply mean that, as an elected official, I don't understand why the successor to the throne can't be elected in the same fashion. That's true. 
If possible, I'd like to hear this directly from Her Majesty. Hmm. <clears throat> your unease is quite understandable. But we do ask that you try to maintain your composure and allow us to continue. As mentioned earlier, I believe Her Majesty will give a formal announcement herself during the festival. Could you be persuaded to shelve your doubts until then? Well, the issue is basically this. Once this becomes common knowledge, we cannot know how the citizens will react. This is why we're telling the leaders first, to help stave off any chaos or public disorder before it happens. This was also the, the decision of His Excellency. Well, yes, this is true. Also, the Queen's abdication of the throne will have international repercussions. The other nations on the continent will have their eyes on us, and we must be watchful for any action on the, on the part of the Erebonians. Surely you can see why it is necessary to show unified support for the new king. This is the world in which we are going to be living. He makes it all sound so rational. Yeah, he's quite the master manipulator. In other words, the official decree will be given during the birthday celebrations. But you thought it would be best to inform us first so that we can be prepared for any issues that may arise, correct? I'm glad to see that we have an understanding. Hmm... If this all comes to pass, we're going to find ourselves quite busy. Yes, and we'll have to announce it to the citizens. I have a question. I believe that the Duke has a fair claim to the throne. However, is there not another who also has the same right of succession? I'm having trouble with that word and I don't know why, I'm very sorry. Well... No doubt you're referring to the, Her Majesty's granddaughter, Princess Claudia. It is true that she and His Excellency have an equal claim to the throne. But it would appear that Her Majesty did not choose her due to her tender age. And I must say, I agree with her wisdom in this matter. I should hardly like to impose such responsibility on, upon a girl so young. Yes, yes, absolutely. For the time being, I believe it would be best for Claudia to find a fine marriage prospect. Though it is strictly informal, there is already interest from the royal families of a number of other nations. Perhaps a royal wedding could take place as soon as this year. Oh my. Hmm. I understand. If that happens, then we'll have two major events to celebrate. Hmm. I honestly think she's a bit young for marriage. Excuse me, may I ask it a question? Zane? Hmm? I don't mind. Speak freely. Sorry to seem rude, but this doesn't sound like the kind of conversation we want outsiders hearing. Particularly a foreigner. So how come you're making this announcement now? That is solely because of the serendipitous turn of events that allowed Bracers to win the championship. We had wanted to inform the guild of this in, of, in advance as well. I have already discussed the idea with Her Majesty. Gotcha. I guess Liberal's military and Bracers are on just as good of terms as the stories say. That is because we lack the military strength of the Empire or the Republic. The harsh reality is that keeping close relations with each other is a must. In any event, do you now understand our atten intentions? Yeah, alright. We'll pass on what we've learned here to the Guild, then. Man, I've heard some pretty unbelievable conversations in my time, but that was something else. I mean, I'm a foreigner after all, so it's not, not that big of a deal for me. I bet it, that was huge news for you guys, though. Of course it was. I can't believe things have gone this far already. Huh? Never mind. But really, what a shame. That food was so amazing, and it practically melted in the mouth. Couldn't tell what the last flavor was, though. Understandable enough. But anyway, did you want to go for a walk to work off some of the, the rich food still? Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I could go for a little bit of fresh air. You just played tourist a little while ago, and now you want to take an after-dinner walk? I sure don't get it. Must be a local thing. I think you're exaggerating a little bit. You haven't gone out to take in the sights? There's a lot of historical... historic architecture around here, you know? If the mood hits me, I may still give it a shot. On the other hand, the kitchen may still have some food left over. You gotta be kidding. You're still hungry? If you had a blade to my throat, my dying wish would be for some liquor and a snack. I might go and hunt up a bar or something in a little bit. I have the hiccups. Great. Sorry for the sudden break here, I had to get rid of the hiccups. God. <sighs> Things have gotten serious. We really have to find a way to get in to see Her Majesty. First things first, we go talk to the head maid, Hilda, like we promised. She probably knows a way for us to speak directly to the Queen. Fine by me. Now, if I'm correct, it was downstairs. This is not downstairs. It was out here, and then downstairs, and then to the right. 
Oh, it's you. What? Colonel Richard. Estelle and Joshua. This is our first opportunity to truly speak face to face, I believe. The last time we sh saw one another was right after Mayor Dalmo was arrested, wasn't it? I'm honestly surprised that you remember us. I realize that we ex exchanged few words, but you made quite an impression on me. My curiosity was piqued, so I did a bit of checking up on you. I was quite surprised to learn that you were the children of Colonel Cassius. How'd you find that out? Please understand, I'm not trying to show off the Intelligence Division's capabilities. I'm greatly indebted to him from our time together in the army. Indeed, more than words can properly express. When I persuade you to stay a while and talk, I've been hoping to speak with you two for quite some time now. Huh? Pardon me, Colonel, but don't you have a meeting with His Excellency? I don't mind being a bit late. Ah, yes. If we're going to talk, why don't we use the lounge inside? I'll mix you up a couple of virgin cocktails. I'll prepare them, sir. No, that won't be necessary. I want you to go to His Excellency and inform him that I'll be delayed. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pardon me, then. Now then, shall we retire to the lounge? Please, follow me. Uh, Joshua, what should we do? I don't see where we have much choice but to follow him. We'll be a little late, but we can talk to the head maid later. Is it time for a sick boss battle? We're gonna do it in the bar here, right? I met Cassius shortly after I graduated from the military academy. I was assigned to a mobile unit that was under his command. And since that time, I have found myself in his debt again and again, both personally and professionally. Uh, he did? And, uh, what did, th did you think of him at the time? To put it simply, he was a hero. And a master swordsman to boot. No matter the scenario, he could find a way to handle any number of battlefronts in any every direction. It wasn't just a matter of sheer tactics. He understood and could direct high-level strategy as well. Quite simply, he was a man without peer. If I didn't know better, I'd say we were talking about two different people. So you were with our father during the Hundred Days War? Yes, he was my CO. Even now, I can still vividly remember the excitement that filled me as we executed his plan that turned the war's tide. Anytime I get to talking about those days, time just runs away with me. But this much I can tell you. If Cassius Bright had not been part of the Royal Army, Liberal would not be part of the Erebonian Empire. No way! That's kinda hard to believe. Well, as a hero, he had a knack for doing unbelievable things. He left the army immediately after the war, declining even a medal from the Queen, so few know, so few know of his achievements. But inside the army, many soldiers still hold him up as the prime example of what a hero should be. Uh... He never said one word about any of this to me. Well, it's not really the kind of thing you tell your daughter about. It's not fair to cri criticize him for that. Hey, whose side are you on? And besides, why doesn't any of this shock you like it shocks me? Did you already know about all this or something? Well, I didn't know that he was Colonel Richard's superior officer. The rest I knew about... vaguely. Vaguely? You're an accomplice? Hey, calm down. It's not like he told me any of it. I just figured a lot of it out. He told me he didn't feel it was something worth going out of his way to tell others about. I just don't get it. When he comes back, he is so in trouble. <laughs> uh, I... Please excuse us. We didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. Seeing you like this is actually a bit of a relief. When I found out that your father was intending to leave the military, I desperately tried to stop him. But it seems that by leaving, he did what was best for himself, after all. After losing his dear wife, maybe being with you was all that could help him recover. Colonel Richard. Now then, I thank you for taking the time to come here. I really can't keep the Duke waiting, so I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Oh, uh, alright. Our apologies for making you so late. Not at all. You both have told me the one thing I wanted most to know. And thus, I have no regrets. Huh? How's that again? I'm sure we'll have a chance to speak again soon. Cassius might even be with us then, to share in the stories. 
What a tease. Um, okay, who was that man and what has he done with Colonel Richard? What are you babbling about now? It's just that it's weird to hear him talking about Dad that way. I wasn't expecting him to be so, well, nice. True. He doesn't seem all that villainous anyway. But even so, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion that he's got something up his sleeve. For now, we should probably put the issue of Dad aside. Yeah, I guess you're right. And I hate to say it, but I think he, that he might have been playing nice just because he could get something out of it. He's an intelligence officer, so he probably thinks that fooling a couple of kids is as easy as could be. Don't you think that's get, going a little too far? You might be right. Let me be the one who's mistrustful of others. You should just follow your instincts and believe whatever you, whatever you think is right. Huh? But just make sure that you're prepared for anything. Don't let your guard down. I'd say a bracer's job is pretty much that, in fact. Okay, I got it. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you? What the heck are you thanking me for? Anyway, we need to go back and see Hilda. She's probably sick of waiting for us. Yeah, she should be in the maid quarters. What an ominous encounter. Wait, can I buy anything from the bar now? How about a cup of warm milk? You got a cup of warm milk? No? Okay. Down we go then. Ah, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You're awfully late, aren't you? Sorry about that. We kinda got caught by Colonel Richard. Did you now? He had some things to tell us about our dad. I don't think he has any idea what we're up to, though. I see. Ah, yes. That letter of introduction did mention that you were Mr. Cassius' children. I can understand that at least some of... At least some of how Colonel Richard feels. feels. Oh, do you know our dad, too? He used to come here when he, we worked at General Morgan's aide de camp. I think? French? I'm told that he was a school friend of the late prince's... Her Majesty's son. Late prince? Princess Claudia's father. Yes, he was killed 15 years ago in a tragic shipwreck. Would that he were still alive today, none of this would be happening. Huh? But lamenting what might have been is a fool's errand. Evening is fast approaching. We must make our preparations at once. Come on in, Shay. Oh, hey, aren't you... Shay, right? Yes, thank you for remembering. You look well, Estelle, Joshua. I've been told of your current predicament. You won't find a more dependable child. She's a great help to us whenever the princess is in the castle. Princess Claudia? That shouldn't pose a problem. Thank you. If you're ready, you should go changing into your uniforms. The ribbons and the headpiece are tricky, so I'll adjust them for you. What? What do you mean? Estelle is going to need to dress as one of the maids in order to get into the royal keep. A little playing with the hair and you'll blend right in. Oh, I get it. Uniforms don't allow for much in the way of personalization. That should be ideal for sneaking in. Huh. Me in a maid's outfit. I've been wanting to try one on since we first met Leela. Cute, breezy, and easy to move in. Well, if our uniforms aren't, weren't easy to move in, they'd make the cleaning much more difficult. I thought so. Well, let's get the sucker on me. Why so excited? I'm glad you're in high spirits, but you need to remember your manners in front of the Queen. You won't have me to lean on this time. Why not? You're changing too, aren't you? Uh... Pardon? I mean, he did play the princess during the place. <laughs> I mean, I, I think one cross-dressing incident is enough for Joshua. I don't think he has the, the mental strength for another. He did play the princess during the play at the campus festival. Is there really that much of a difference between the fancy dress and a maid outfit? That's different. It was a play. I can't appear before her majesty in women's clothes. Oh, you'll be fine. It's not all that shameful or anything. Besides, you made such a gorgeous princess. Not this again. Cut the jokes, will you? Hilda, Shay, help me out here. Say something. <laughs> yes, beautiful. Silence is perfection. 
Ah, <clears throat> sorry. Anyone? I see. That shouldn't pose a problem. Shay, don't you have that extra hairpiece designed for the princess? Yes, it's never been used, though. He has that full dark hair, so it'd probably look good on him. Hey, hold on a second. Well, looks like a three to one vote. Majority rules. This way, please. We can use this as a changing room. Wait a minute, I don't ever remember ever agreeing to changing. <laughs> alright, alright, if I have to change, I can do it myself. Shay, you're not planning on using makeup too, are you? Kids these days. Oh my. Ta-da! What do you think? <laughs> I think it suits her very well. Such a bright, active maiden training. And after only just coming to the castle, too. You certainly have me convinced. Is that supposed to be certainty, or is, or is, or is there a typo in there? And with the hair down like that, no one will be any the wiser. Perhaps you'd like to work at Grantsville Castle for real once this is all settled. Well, we already work for as bracers, so, uh... Anyway. Come on, Joshua, get out of here. <sighs> no chance I can talk you out of this? None at all. You're just making this take longer. Fine. You're impossible sometimes. Oh, mama. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, it's almost frightening how good that looks. Isn't it awesome? It looks better on him than it does on me, and I'm an actual girl. But a makeup can make all the difference in the world. Please, just say you're done. Well, I suppose so. I'll show you the way to the Royal Keep. You need to make certain you watch me and learn how a maid handles herself. Yes, ma'am. We're finally going to meet the Queen in person. Yes, this is the do or die moment. We just have to stay focused and get to the Royal Keep. It's gonna be- it's gonna- it's hard to take you seriously in that outfit. Well, excuse me. This was your idea. I can't believe you had the nerve to pick on- Sorry, sorry. Don't get all mad. I'll treat you to some ice cream later, okay? I'm not like you. I'm not obsessed with food. Hey, I'm not obsessed with food. They get along so well, don't they? We're out of time. Let's go to the Royal Keep. That's a nice humorous interjection. Oh, I'm playing as Hilda now. That makes sense. What up, dude? So this... Where was the Royal Keep again? <coughs> uh, wait before you can enter. Where's the Royal Keep? I forgot. This is it. No, this isn't it. Okay. Looks like I'm uh, totally and utterly lost. I... I swear. Come on. There we go. Yes, it's up upstairs. Yes, okay. I... I yeah. There we go up here. And this must be our destination, yes? Hilda. What business do you have at the with Her Majesty at this hour? I'm bringing some tea and spoons at her request. The current situation means that Her Majesty is denied the right to go even go about her daily life as she wishes, after all. Such harsh words. Hmm. Who are these maids with you? I don't recognize them. His Excellency ordered me to hire on some additional staff to help. They've only just arrived at the castle today. Really, now? Hey, you're pretty cute. Thank you. Huh? Why do I get the feeling we've met before? Crap. Do you stare so hard at every young lady you see? I do hope you're not thinking any untoward thoughts. I'd rather think that His Excellency and the Colonel would disapprove. Hey, it's not like that! We're the elite of the Royal Army, we wouldn't do that. All's well, then. Now, will you please allow us to pass? Pardon us, ladies. Please, go ahead. Now, it is past 30 minutes, and I hope that this wouldn't end in, like, uh, a, a locked encounter, but I'll just keep going. Phew, that was intense. Thanks, Hilda. You're a real lifesaver. Yeah, that was really well done. I'm just glad I could help. 
Now then, are you planning to change your clothes before going to see Her Majesty? If you'd prefer, I can just show you the way now. I think I'm okay as is. Boy clothes, now. Oh, for the love of- why are you so always so self-conscious? What was wrong with that- what, with what we had on? It's not an issue of self-consciousness. By the way, Hilda, is this room what I think it is? Yes, it is Princess Claudia's bedroom. But she rarely sleeps in the castle, so the room is all but unused. No kidding. But I heard that the princess was tending to be a queen. Tending to what? <laughs> tending to the queen, there we go. I guess that's just gossip then. You'd have to ask Her Majesty for the full details. Her room is on the second floor of the Royal Keep. I'll take you to- I'll take you there. Now we- I can end. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Trails in the Sky in the Sky is available on Steam and the PSP for $20. The second chapter is also available on Steam and the PSP for $30. I highly recommend you pick them up and uh, wait for the third chapter to be translated. In order to experience the full trilogy, there's also other Legend of Heroes games like Trails of Cold Steel. And, uh, a couple of Japanese-only games. There's a lot of games in this, uh, this series. And I imagine they're all lovingly crafted. Be sure to pick them up. Be sure to experience them for yourself. Do all the side quests. Fully explore. Fully talk to everybody. I assure you it's well worth it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Toodaloo.